Thanks for watching AM Northwest this morning. You know, you don't have to spend a fortune to find a great glass of wine, and you don't have to be a connoisseur to appreciate it. Here to help, we welcome to AM Northwest award-winning wine blogger and the author of Wine Folly, The Essential Guide to Wine, Madeline Puckett. Good to have you with us. I have to tell you, I'm so excited about this segment, so there's so many questions to get to. Let's start with, though, a proper glass uh, is very important for the certain type of wine, right? Isn't that, isn't that strange? And in fact, there was a study that came out recently in Japan where they were analyzing different types of glassware to see what happens. And what's interesting and why wine is important and even co things like coffee are important to have in a vessel that can collect the aromas is because the alcohol volatizes when you swirl that wine. Yeah. It volatizes and all the little aroma compounds get in the air and they float around and they go into your nose. So a red wine glass should be big, right? And gen Well, you should have room. Okay. in your red wine glass to collect the aromas. You know, people talk to me, well, is it, does it matter if I have a stemmed or stemless glass? That doesn't matter as much as having space in the bowl. Oh. So don't go home and fill <laughs> your glass all the way. Just go like a little bit and you can always put in a little bit more, more. so that you can swirl that glass in and smell the wine because so much of our flavor, our sense of flavor in wine comes from aroma. Uh, but you say stemless or uh, stems I don't doesn't it, matter. I don't think it matters. Because, I mean, it's so popular now. I have the stemless because I glasses break and the stemless they, is not so, not so easy to knock those over. To be, you know, if you want, if, you know, there is an argument that, you know, if your hand is on the glass, you're going to warm it up. Right. But, you know, hold it low. You know, if it's, if you don't pour too much, it should be fine if you're keeping your wine a little ch chilled. That's probably Speaking fine. Speaking of chilled, all, all wines should be chilled except for reds or? This is a great question and this is something that is, it's, even red wine should be slightly cooler than room temperature. Really? Yes. Okay. And you can, a lot of times you can make a really bold, like high alcohol, like 15% ABV wine taste better by having it be slightly chilled. Again, alcohol is evaporating at room temperature. Right. And if you have a lot of alcohol in the wine, it's going to really throw out a lot of aroma compounds which burn your nose. That's why when you smell a whiskey, you're like, oh, my nose yeah. is burning. Yeah. And so when you, when you chill things a little bit, it helps slow down that process. Of course, some white wines are better a little bit warmer. You know, a nice big bold Chardonnay, yeah. if you let it warm up, it just breathes all the aromas that were lost being ice cold. Gotcha. And what about uh, sparkling wines? Sparkling wines I like to serve cold because okay. part of the experience of sparkling is the bubbles. Right, right. And everyone, Do, yeah. You have an interesting way to open a bottle of champagne, well, sparkling so wine. It, I love to show this to anyone who wants to drink champagne and sparkling wine and is afraid. Totally, I'm, I'm afraid. <laughs> so this is actually, and I can show you it right now, and I'll even, I'll even make it a little okay, hard for wait, myself. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> so, Are we gonna have to back off here? Just so like if you had a rough drive home or something in the, <laughs> and the, and in the, the wine was traffic. bouncing in the car, or something like that. Okay, um, you just shook no, it up. There's no reason to have the foil on there if you don't want it. Okay. Now this thing on the top is called the cage. If you hold it down with your thumb, you're gonna, it's going to be secure. Okay. And then the little tab here, you twist six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Always. Oh, it's a really? machine that puts it on there. So then you loosen it, but never take it off. Okay. Now, technically, the wine is dangerous because yes. the cage is loosened. You're a stanchy standing there. Yeah, well, I'm afraid you're going to pop that and poke so somebody's then, eye out. What I like to do is I hold it, mm -hmm. keep my thumb on the cage, and my hand on the cage, they come out together, mm -hmm. and then this side of my hand, I'm gonna rotate while holding this. So this stays still, right. the top part stays still, and I rotate the bottom. Wow. And if you hold it at a 45 degree angle, well, about 45, um, if I just let it out really slowly, it shouldn't wow. spill over. That's amazing. Right? Yeah, that's great. So you can drink, you don't have to be afraid. Thank you very much. Drinking. It's noon somewhere. A little, <laughs> that's great. I like your style. You know, yeah. the champagne sparkling wine is one of the only drinks that you can enjoy uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner and midnight oh. snack. There you go. Now, as you're pouring this, what about decanting wine? I see a lot of decanters out there now. Tell me about your philosophy on that. Well, you know, 
in the in the book that we come out that I came out with, I do suggest that pretty much all red wines can be decanted. Now, does there, it make does it taste better if it's decanted? There are a little a couple of exceptions to that, but for the most part, yes. And the reason and the primary reason why has a lot to do with what's going on with the wine inside of the bottle mm -hmm. and how the wine changes when you expose oxygen to it. And for the most part, when we're drinking a nice bold red wine, you know, a Merlot, a Cabernet Sauvignon, a Syrah, something like that, it helps to add a little oxygen so that the, the components, the phenolics in the wine can interact with that oxygen and become smoother. Wow. So you get a smoother wine. Yeah. And if you're in a desperate situation, you have a bottle of $5 wine, you can even do something like this in your blender. You're saying put the $5 wine in your blender you and that decants it and it tastes blender, better? It will taste better. And the only reason I say that is because I've tested it with a decanter, uh, an aerator, and a blender. And the, the blender, you know, two seconds, three seconds, it's done. What about if you, let's say you get a, a bottle of wine that's not very good. I understand you have a way of making it taste better. Well, you can make sangria. Oh, good one. <laughs> that's a good one. But if... Actually, if you get a red wine and it smells really stinky, right. like almost like people will say, oh, it smells like sulfur. Um, that isn't, it, it's, there's some chemical stuff going on that needs to have oxygen. And that's okay. why the decanting helps. And one trick that I've learned is sometimes if you have a bad wine, some wines are poorly made and they have a fault in them that gives off this onion, garlic, weird sulfury aroma. Yeah. And you can just plop in a silver ring and the silver actually binds to those compounds. It doesn't get rid of them, but it changes them so that you can't detect them in oh. your mouth. Because our mouths are pretty smart, but they're not as smart as some other animals, and we won't be able to taste it, and it's, it won't hurt you at all. Fascinating. We'll yeah. tell folks again, the book is called Wine Follow. You have a book event tonight at Powell City of Books on 10th and West Burnside. Yeah. We'll put all that information on our website at k2.com. Madeline, that was really fat. You have to come back and tell us more. <laughs> that was great.